Okay. So can you see my slide and my pointer? Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for introduction. So, uh, good good evening. Uh, I guess uh, in your side. Uh, actually, here in Japan, uh, it's good morning. And uh, I'm Keisuke Fuji uh, from Osaka University. And first of all, I'd like to thank organizer for providing me uh, this nice opportunity. And uh, today, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, NISCA aware uh, methodologies for variational quantum algorithms. Uh, this talk is based on uh, these uh, series of works uh, done in collaboration with these uh, courses. Okay, uh, this is outline uh, of this uh, talk. So uh, first I will give an introduction to variational quantum algorithm and explain the potential uh, issues in NISC devices. And uh, to overcome these issues uh, in this talk, I will provide three possible uh, methods. Uh, first is the divide and conquer uh, method for variational quantum algorithm, uh, which is method for solving uh, scientific or practically important problems using a quantum computer with fewer number of qubits. And next, uh, I will introduce the quadratic Clifford expansion method. Uh, this is a kind of perturbation approach uh, for the quantum circuit. Uh, this method uh, can be used to investigate the performance of quantum uh, variational algorithms uh, with a relatively, relatively larger number of qubits. And then the last one is the VQE by classical optimization. Uh, this is a proposal uh, to use classical simulability uh, to evaluate uh, local observable uh, with shallow quantum circuits. And then, uh, uh, then the classically optimized parameter is uh, used on actual uh, quantum computer to, to get non-local uh, observable uh, or some global uh, information on quantum state. And uh, we expect that all of these uh, methods are promising uh, to overcome these uh, uh, issues uh, that NISC devices are currently facing. So uh, I'd like to start with an uh, introduction. Uh, as you know, uh, there is a currently a uh, race to develop a quantum uh, computer and a quantum computer on the scale of tens of qubits has already been realized. And uh, of course, a quantum computer of this scale uh, is not capable of running uh, complex uh, quantum algorithms such as global search or quantum phase estimation. Uh, so this is where variational uh, quantum algorithms or hybrid quantum classical hybrid algorithms are expected to come in. So in a variational uh, quantum algorithms, uh, I, I think you you already uh, hear about uh, variational quantum algorithms so many times uh, today. Uh, but uh, in a variational quantum algorithm, uh, quantum computer is used uh, uh, only to generate a quantum state uh, using the parameterized quantum circuit as simple as possible. And then uh, for the quantum state uh, generated by this uh, parameterized quantum, uh, quantum uh, circuit, uh, the measurement is done to evaluate uh, the expectation uh, value with, with respect to certain uh, observable, such as a Hamiltonian. And then uh, this uh, is used as a cost function, uh, and then the parameters uh, of the quantum circuit is updated uh, so that uh, this uh, expectation value uh, becomes minimum uh, to get some uh, desired uh, quantum uh, state. Uh, this kind of uh, variational quantum algorithm has been applied uh, not only uh, to the quantum many-body system, uh, such as quantum chemistry or quantum contents matter, uh, physics, uh, but also oh, nowadays uh, these uh, vari variational uh, quantum algorithms is applied uh, for optimization uh, such as QAOA and also uh, quantum machine learning. So uh, here is uh, variational quantum eigen solver. Uh, this is one of the most important uh, variational quantum algorithms. 
algorithms, uh, this uh, utilizes a uh, parameterized quantum circuit to generate uh, quantum states. Uh, in order to represent electronic states uh, of complex molecule uh, or the ground states uh, of configuration, uh, ground state of quantum spin models. And then uh, expectation value of local terms of the Hamiltonian uh, is uh, evaluated, estimated by using the uh, measurement on the parameterized uh, quantum state. And then uh, from uh, this uh, local uh, energy expectation value, uh, we can calculate the energy expectation value. And then uh, parameters are updated so that uh, uh, the uh, energy uh, expectation values uh, becomes uh, minimum uh, by using, uh, for example, uh, gradient uh, descent uh, method. So recently, an experiment has been done uh, uh, by the Google's uh, team uh, which showed that, uh, which demonstrated uh, the simulation of uh, hydrogen atomic chain uh, by using uh, 12 uh, qubits. Uh, so this is a very great uh, step uh, toward actual uh, meaningful or up applying quantum computer for meaningful uh, problem. But still the number of qubits is very limited uh, to the 20 qubits. So uh, this uh, could be attributed to uh, potential issues on the NISC devices. So here, uh, I want to explain about the potential current potential uh, issues uh, on the NISC uh, devices. The first issue is the number of qubits is too small uh, to apply uh, VQE for scientifically interesting or practically important uh, problems. Uh, and the second issue is the quantum computer is uh, in general hard to simulate uh, for classical computer. This is why we want to uh, realize quantum computer. But at the same time, uh, this means that uh, the performance analysis of quantum computer or quantum algorithm uh, or variation of quantum eigensolver is uh, very hard uh, before just doing the actual uh, experiment on experiments uh, on the uh, actual quantum computer. And uh, the uh, final uh, third issue is the, you know, uh, in the variation of quantum eigensolver, uh, the cost function is uh, represented as expectation values, uh, which suffer from the statistical error, uh, because we have to do many, many uh, measurements uh, to, to estimate uh, the expectation uh, value uh, and uh, to get the cost of function. So uh, I guess these uh, issues are very uh, severe uh, for practical application of uh, NIST devices for meaningful problem. And uh, here we uh, explain, uh, we uh, show uh, three possible solution uh, for these issues. The first one uh, is the divide and conquer method for uh, VQE. Uh, this allows us to uh, divide uh, the whole problem into the smaller problem uh, so that uh, we can solve a uh, practically important uh, problem uh, by using smaller number of qubits. And also uh, in the second topic, uh, I will talk about quadratic uh, Clifford expansion so this is a method, uh, this is a kind of perturbation uh, approach for quantum circuit, uh, which allows us to efficiently estimate uh, the performance of variational uh, quantum algorithm uh, on classical uh, computer. So uh, this, uh, it allows us to perform the, it, it allows us to calculate uh, the performance or VQE with relatively uh, larger number of qubits, such as 48 qubits. And also the obtain, obtained parameters uh, by using this quadratic uh, Clifford expansion uh, can also be used uh, for the uh, initial parameter uh, for the actual uh, VQE uh, experiment. And uh, for the third issue, uh, I will show uh, classical, uh, the idea of classically optimized uh, VQE. Uh, which means that by using classically simulability of shallow quantum circuits, uh, the all parameters are optimized uh, solely on the classical computer. 
And then uh, this uh, op classically optimized parameter is used on actual uh, quantum uh, computer uh, to, to evaluate uh, non-local uh, observable, uh, such as topological order or uh, inner product uh, in between two quantum states. So anyway, uh, I want to start with the first uh, topic. So uh, he uh, so uh, first topic is divide and conquer method uh, for the evaluation of uh, quantum eigen server, which we call uh, the VQE. So the system uh, we are considering is as follow. So uh, here we uh, we have a subsystem uh, inside which uh, the qubit interact uh, strongly interact with each other. And then uh, each subsystem uh, interact with each other uh, with the inter subsystem interactions. Uh, so uh, the system is something like molecular system uh, such as Dendrimer uh, or a two dimensional system uh, with renormalization uh, approach. But anyway, the Hamiltonian is given as follows uh, the Hamiltonian is, consists of subsystem. Uh, Hamiltonian, uh, and also the interaction in between these uh, subsystem. And then uh, the first step of this uh, deep VQE is uh, each subsystem is solved by using uh, conventional uh, variational uh, quantum eigen so far. So by doing so, uh, we can get a ground state uh, of the e ground state uh, of the e subsystem. And then uh, the next step is as follows. So uh, starting from the ground state obtained in the previous VQE, uh, we want to uh, define new local basis uh, as follows. So uh, here you can find the ground state uh, obtained in the previous VQE. And if you apply local excitation on this, uh, the ground state, then you can generate uh, the, you can span the uh, local or subspace. Uh, which we call uh, local basis. So if you choose K local excitation, then you can uh, span the K dimensional uh, subsystem uh, to, uh, uh, which is used to expand uh, this uh, subsystem. Uh, the choice of this local excitation is arbitrary, but uh, here we uh, choose uh, operate W, which is included in the interaction uh, Hamiltonian as follow. So, for example, if uh, if you are interested in Heisenberg interaction, then this uh, operator local excitation is poly x y z uh, operator. And then uh, next step is uh, by using this local basis. Uh, now we calculate the effective Hamiltonian. Uh, so effective Hamiltonian for the uh, subsystem, uh, as well as uh, effective Hamiltonian uh, for the interaction in between uh, these uh, subsystems. Uh, in this way. So, uh, and then uh, effective Hamiltonian uh, can be reconstructed. Uh, here, uh, the dimension is k2n, uh, k is the dimension of local subsystem, and n is the number of the system uh, here. And uh, if you need, uh, you can repeat these, uh, uh, sorry, and then uh, this effective Hamiltonian is again uh, solved by using uh, VQE. Uh, here in this case, we need a n log to k uh, qubit uh, to the uh, for the second step uh, VQE. And then, if you need uh, these uh, procedure, uh, calculating the effective Hamiltonian a and VQE is uh, is uh, repeated many times. So uh, here is a numerical result for the class one dimensional Heisenberg antipel chains. Uh, so, uh, so here uh, the subsystem consists of four qubits, just four qubits, and uh, each four qubit system interact with each other, uh, uh, and all interaction is Heisenberg Antifel or interaction. And uh, we perform numerical simulation from four by two system and uh, from four by two system to four by eight system, and here uh, is the result of the VQE. And here, uh, local, local approximation means that uh, the energy is evaluated by using the local ground states uh, with uh, neglecting the interaction in between the uh, subsystem. And here, uh, ED indicates that uh, exact diagonalization. 
So, uh, so you can find that uh, uh, here uh, in the deep BQE uh, outcome uh, is a good agreement with the exact diagonalization uh, with uh, using the smaller number of qubits. Uh, for, for example, for by eight system, uh, the total number of qubits is 32, but in actual or deep BQE, uh, the uh, number of qubits required is 24. So uh, uh, the number of qubits is smaller uh, compared to the origin original system. And uh, here in this case, the system is very simple. Our local uh, subsystem is uh, very small. So the, uh, the reduction of uh, number of qubits is very uh, small. Uh, but uh, if you think about two dimensional system, uh, we can get a more uh, dimensional uh, reduction effect. Uh, for example, if we are allowed to access 28 qubit quantum computer, then uh, we can handle uh, 16 by 16 uh, square lattice. And also, if you are allowed to, sorry, if you are allowed to address uh, 32 qubit, uh, then the, you are uh, you can uh, handle uh, 32 by 32 square lattice. And uh, still, a numerical simulation is undergo. Uh, we already uh, get preliminary uh, data, numerical data for the two-dimensional two system uh, by recursively applying this uh, VQE uh, idea. Uh, and, uh, but still, uh, uh, we already get uh, the numerical data uh, for the 16 uh, sites, 32 sites, and 64 sites uh, by only using uh, these number of qubits, uh, 16 or uh, 20 qubits. But still, we have to uh, compare uh, with the uh, exact diagonalization or any other uh, method uh, to, to, to validate uh, the, uh, the outcome obtained by using this uh, idea. So further numerical study should be done uh, to, to validate the idea uh, of quantum computational uh, renormalization group at large. So this is the idea of the dividing, uh, divide and conquer method for VQE. Uh, the second uh, topic is quadratic crucial expansion. Uh, so uh, here is the main idea of quadratic crucial expansion. So here, this is the expectation value and this is a parameter. And uh, here you can find the cost function uh, of the parameter. Uh, for, uh, for example, variation of uh, quantum eigen solver. And the uh, main idea here is uh, we want to apply second order approximation of this uh, cost function uh, at the classically simulatable point. So here the classical simulatable point is uh, the circuit is uh, becomes threefold circuit if you choose a parameter uh, here. And then the idea is uh, approximate uh, this uh, cost function uh, around this uh, classical simulatable point uh, in the second order uh, so that uh, we can uh, estimate uh, the, the optimal uh, parameter uh, under this uh, second order approximation. So here is the assumption uh, to apply this idea. So the circuit is uh, considered to be consist of a Clifford circuit and a Pauli rotation uh, circuit. Uh, this is a very generic uh, assumption. And the input state uh, should be the stabilizer state. And then uh, we can uh, think about the cost of function uh, like this. Uh, here is observable. And uh, the state is a parameterized uh, quantum circuit generated from this uh, kind of quantum circuit. And uh, in this case, uh, the uh, good thing is uh, if you put theta equal to zero, then the quantum circuit is Clifford circuit. And also, or in this case, uh, we can show that uh, we can efficiently uh, compute uh, the first and second uh, order derivatives uh, with respect to these cost functions. So let uh, let uh, see. Uh, as follow. So uh, the first derivatives uh, like this, uh, if you apply this uh, partial de derivative with respect to this parameter theta two, and then uh, you can uh, get, uh, you have to insert uh, the Pauli operator uh, with respect to this uh, Pauli rotation 
if you apply this uh, partial derivative. But uh, still, uh, you realize that uh, this uh, whole circuit is Clifford uh, circuit. If you put uh, the parameter is zero, so uh, in this way uh, you can uh, evaluate you can evaluate uh, fast derivatives uh, efficiently by using uh, classical simulatability of Clifford circuit. And uh, here, uh, the second order derivatives uh, is almost the same uh, way. So if you uh, perform uh, the partial de derivative with respect to theta1 and theta2, then uh, the Pauli operator P2 and P1 is inserted uh, corresponding to the uh, Pauli rotation R2 and R1. So in this way, uh, if you put theta zero, or we can efficiently compute uh, first uh, and second derivative uh, with respect to the parameters. So in this way, you can uh, reconstruct uh, this uh, expectation value as a function of the theta, uh, as a function of parameters uh, in the second order. And this tells us that uh, under this uh, second order approximation, we can uh, estimate optimal uh, parameter, uh, which minimize this uh, uh, expectation uh, cost of function uh, in, uh, up to the second order. To check this idea, uh, we employ this uh, hardware efficient ansatz uh, in this, uh, as shown uh, here, and we perform uh, several numerical uh, experiments uh, for the hydrogen chains. And uh, uh, we find that uh, this uh, second order approximation uh, for the quantum circuits uh, uh, has a good agreement uh, with the exact uh, evaluation of e energy expectation value. So uh, here, uh, orange uh, data uh, indicate that second order approximation and blue data indicate that uh, the exact uh, evaluation uh, using uh, uh, simulating the quantum uh, circuit, full simulation of quantum circuits, so which include a third or higher uh, order term. But we realize that uh, for the smaller atomic distance, uh, the uh, second order approximation uh, uh, has good agreement with uh, this uh, exact uh, evaluation of energy expectation value. So this implies that uh, this second order uh, perturbation theory for the quantum circuit is very useful uh, and meaningful. And next, uh, here in this case- uh, uh, Five more minutes. Okay, uh, I see. So here in this case, uh, we perform numerical simulation uh, for relatively uh, large system uh, for 28 qubits and 48 qubits. So even in this 28 qubit, uh, the second order approximation is good agree agreement uh, with the exact evaluation. Uh, and also here in this case, uh, 48 qubit uh, exact uh, evaluation is not allowed uh, because the number of qubit is large, but uh, we expect that uh, this is very good uh, even in this case. So uh, here is a quadratic expansion. Uh, method for benchmarking where to be large uh, system. So uh, as a final topic, I, I will briefly mention about uh, classically optimized BQE. So uh, the problem setting here is as follow. Uh, we are interested in uh, just shallow quantum circuit. And uh, in, in this shallow quantum circuit, uh, expectation value uh, of the local uh, observable uh, can be efficiently uh, calculated. For example, if we think about a uh, constant depth quantum circuit or uh, logarithmic uh, depth quantum circuit, uh, if you are interested in uh, the local observable, then uh, the thing we have to think about is causal cone, uh, the qubits and the quantum gate inside uh, in this uh, causal cone. So if the depth is shallow, uh, then the number of qubits uh, included in this causal coin is very limited, which implies that uh, you can efficiently e evaluate uh, the local expectation value uh, by using classical computer. So this means that uh, optimization uh, with respect to this local uh, Hamiltonian can be done efficiently solely on the classical computer. 
So this is a good news uh, because uh, classical computer is free from noise and also uh, there is no statistical error. You can directly evaluate the inner product in between two quantum states. But uh, uh, global uh, information uh, such as non-local order parameters in the topological order the system or uh, inner product uh, or state overlap between uh, two quantum states uh, could not be uh, simulated efficiently on class classical computer. So this uh, means that uh, even if you, your parameters is optimized uh, on the classical computer, uh, there is an uh, advantage of using actual quantum computers uh, using uh, such a classical opt optimized parameters to evaluate uh, certain uh, physical uh, variable like uh, non-local order parameter. So to test uh, this idea, uh, we perform numerical simulation uh, for the transverse uh, field uh, cluster Hamiltonian uh, as a polar. So here you can find the class stabilizer for the cluster state. And also here you can find the transverse uh, field. And uh, this model, uh, if you put j equal to zero, then the exact ground state is a cluster state. And uh, this uh, model uh, is known to have a, a symmetry protected topological order, uh, which is characterized uh, by using this uh, non-local uh, order parameter. And uh, we perform a uh, numerical simulation uh, to perform VQE for this system. And then uh, uh, where we can use the idea classical uh, simulation by using a uh, causal cone uh, for or shallow uh, quantum circuit. And then obtain the quantum state is further used uh, to uh, evaluate all the parameters. Uh, hopefully this uh, process uh, should be done on actual quantum computer because this uh, non-local uh, evaluation of non-local order parameter is uh, hard uh, for the uh, classical or simulation. But in this case, we are thinking about one dimensional system and the relatively low depths, uh, it uh, also how efficiently done on the classical computer. And here is all the parameter uh, as a function of, uh, of the uh, transverse field J. And you can uh, see that uh, orange is exact solution and blue is the uh, outcome from the blue QE. And uh, this uh, nicely reconstruct the, the exact solution. But here, we sh it's interesting to note that uh, because of this low depth uh, result in the uh, very poor representation power, and uh, at the same time, uh, this uh, result in the rapid change of the, this uh, order parameter uh, because of this poor uh, representation power of this low depth uh, quantum circuit. So finally, uh, I will uh, slightly mention about the application of this idea uh, for the classification of quantum phase uh, by using uh, the quantum state uh, uh, obtained from the BQE. So actually, currently, a uh, machine learning approach uh, for the uh, quantum phase of matter attracts much attention. And here, uh, uh, I apply uh, the VQE, uh, the solution obtained from VQE for the uh, classification of quantum phase. So here we add another term in the Hamiltonian, and now we have a two parameter J1 and J2. And then uh, the state uh, obtained from the classically optimized VQE is uh, further used uh, on the quantum uh, computer to evaluate state overlap uh, in a product in between the two ground state with different parameters. And uh, this could be efficiently done on the quantum uh, computer. And then by using this inner product value of the state overlap, uh, we can perform spectral clustering method to, to, to classify the, the uh, the quantum uh, phase uh, in this uh, one-dimensional system. So here is a result uh, by using spectral clustering for the exact ground state and uh, successfully three uh, quantum phase is uh, classified. And here uh, we apply a clustering method uh, by using uh, for the VQE and we uh, also obtain the similar uh, result, but uh, there are uh, uh, included uh, small uh, systematic error. So uh, this is a summary of this talk, and uh, time is running. Uh, I want to uh, I want to finish uh, my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, there are a couple of questions. So uh, Bella, do you want to unmute and ask? 
sure. Yeah, I was just wondering. So the divide and conquer approach um, that seems pretty closely related to like RG approaches that have been tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are known to become very limited when the sort of local ground state of a patch doesn't have much to do with the global ground state. So there's some very well known cases where this fails. Um, so that seems like it could introduce kind of a systematic error here. Uh, do you see a way of overcoming that? Uh, actually, the the for the two dimensional dimensional system, uh, less numerical data is uh, already obtained. So uh, we cannot say anything. But uh, yeah, uh, in the future, uh, we want to uh, evaluate systematic uh, error and uh, how to overcome. Uh, such a kind of error, but uh, at least we can say that uh, there are so many uh, renormalization group approach already done uh, on the uh, conventional work, uh, such as the tensor uh, network or uh, tensor network or uh, PEPs or something. So uh, we can borrow uh, the idea developing uh, developed in such a kind of system. But those don't sort of construct the global ground state from the ground state of just a few sites, right? I mean, the, the typical counter example, if you just take a particle in the box, you know, in 1D or in 2D, this kind of approach will sort of fail because you get, in this approach, you would get a wave function with like four nodes where really the ground state should have no nodes. Um, so do you see like a general way of overcoming that or is it kind of a case by case evaluation? Mm, I, I guess it, it, it could be overcome case by case, uh, depending on the uh, problem you are interested in. OK, thanks. Okay. I think we have time for maybe one quick last question, which uh, I think Tom has. I'm sure. I mean, I just had a, a small one. When you when you were using your um, approximate, the classically um, calculatable approximation to the, um, you know, the classical expansion around the, the Clifford point, of the circuit. Yeah. I was wondering why you, was there any reason why you stopped at second order? You could continue this to fourth order or higher, I guess. Yeah, actually, actually, uh, if you are interested in third or fourth order, then uh, you can calculate uh, uh, such a kind of higher order derivative in the same way. Uh, still, uh, such a kind of circuit is crippled circuit. But uh, uh, the number of coefficient is uh, rapidly increased. So if the Number of total number of parameter is m, uh, then the second order coefficient is is m uh, m to the second, uh, but third order is m to the three, and the fourth order is n to the four. So which implies that uh, there are so many uh, coefficients, but still it's polynomial if you truncate uh, finite finite uh, order derivatives. Yeah, I guess I was wondering then if you if you say went to second order and then I guess third order or third order yeah third order or fourth order as well and then you can see about the convergence of the approximation this might give you an idea of whether of whether or not you're working well. Yeah, that would be a very interesting uh, and uh, we should check. Uh, so you mean uh, if we can calculate third order, then uh, we can uh, guarantee that second order uh, approximation is. Uh, whether or not the second order approximation is good or not. So, yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Thank, thank you. you. Right, thank you very much for the talk. Okay, great. Thank you again, Keisuke, for the talk. And uh, thank you to both speakers. And this concludes the session. And uh, see everybody tomorrow. Thank you so much. <laughs>